All right, welcome everyone. Thank you all so much for being here today. My name is Samuel Schallenberger. I am the Assistant Director for Student Development and Orientation in our College Programming and Orientation Office here at UChicago in the college. And this is one of our many wonderful webinars that we are putting on for you this summer today featuring college academic advising, um, who will be going over an overview of the core curriculum with you all, answering those burning questions that you have, giving you a really strong foundation as you enter your summer and prepare for this fall. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to our college academic academic advising office, and they are going to dive in. There will be a little bit of time at end for Q&A, so if you would like to send that through the Q&A feature or in the chat, whichever you prefer, feel free to. We will get to as many of those as possible, and we will be taking stock of all of the questions just to make sure we're able to follow up with you all. This is being recorded, and it will be available after the webinar is over, posted on our website. So if you do need to leave at any point, or you want to watch this again or show it to a family member, no worries. We will have that available for you all. Without further ado, I will hand it over to College Academic Advising. Great, just can you give me a thumbs up, advisors, if you can see that? Okay, awesome. So welcome everyone and welcome to the College Academic Advising Office's webinar. It's called Overview of the Core. My name is Robin Graham. I am the Assistant Director in the College Academic Advising Office here on campus, and I am joined by four fabulous academic advisors who will talk with you today about the university's core curriculum. Before we get started, though, I just want to share a little bit about our office. The Academic Advising Office employs 25 advisors, along with six advising deans, who will work with you individually to help you think about your academic goals and to help you plan your coursework through your four years here in the college. Just a quick reminder that next week, you will be pre-registering for your preferred humanities sequence. And later this month, you will be assigned to work with an advisor that you will meet with once during the summer to get you on the right path as you plan the rest of your autumn quarter classes. Now this summer, our office is hosting three webinars. This one, which will provide an overview of the core. One later in June that will cover how to maximize your relationship with your advisor and the expectations of that relationship. And finally, in August, we will have an in-depth webinar on how you will pre-register for your autumn quarter classes. So as I mentioned, I'm joined by four colleagues today. We have Mike Arnato, Judith Hernandez, Anastasia Birch, and Will Rawl, and we are all super excited and happy to be talking with you today. Just a quick overview of the agenda for our discussion. We're going to talk about um, the philosophy of the core and kind of give you an overview introduction. We're going to talk a little bit about UChicago slang, give you a deeper overview of what the core is. We're going to provide some helpful resources that you can use to kind of help yourself understand the core even more. And then we will talk about scheduling your first quarter courses. And we'll have, of course, as uh, Samuel said, time at the end for any questions that you might have. So now I am going to turn it over to Will, who will talk about the core and the philosophy behind it. Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> first, let me just say congratulations and welcome to the University of Chicago um, with so much going on. With everything that's been happening over the past just few months, I hope you've taken time to celebrate and really congratulate yourself on, on making it this far. So we're really excited to meet you here soon. And as Robin said, I'm going to hear a talk with you about what exactly this core curriculum is and why it is that we make you do the core curriculum. Um, it is our mission at the University of Chicago to foster the next generation of experts, innovators, and leaders. And that's precisely the journey that you will begin when you come to campus in autumn. You're going to choose a field, you're going to immerse yourself in it, and you will emerge with new knowledge to go on and, and accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish or whatever goals you may have. But it's not simply enough to simply impart specialized or technical knowledge of physics or political science or history or linguistics. Indeed, we aim to provide a holistic liberal arts education 
that will encourage you Chicago students to be well-rounded and conscientious contributors to the communities around them. And that's where the core curriculum comes in. The core curriculum is comprised of 15 classes that you should complete over the course of your first two years here. You'll be introduced to a broad range of academic fields and disciplines, everything from literature, history, arts, mathematics, the social, biological, and physical sciences, and how we approach them at the college level. You may have had some of these classes in high school, but I can assure you that you will have not thought about them in the ways that your instructors and professors will ask you to think about them here. You will learn, for example, that history is not simply a discipline that asks you to recall facts and names and dates, but instead to think critically about how narratives have been constructed to shape what we know about the world around us, to better understand the spaces and the places that you interact with every day. Simply put, the core curriculum will introduce you to what it means to think like a college student to instill the modes of critical thinking, problem solving, and knowledge making that you will take with you into your own fields of study. And that's why it's so important to engage the core curriculum early, because these courses represent the foundations on which you will build a life of inquiry for here at the University of Chicago and beyond. Now, I know what plenty of you are already thinking. I don't want to take math. I don't like literature classes, and I think history is very boring. But that's kind of the point. The point is to illuminate your academic blind spots, to challenge your intellectual muscles so that you reconsider your own familiar paths from a new vantage point so that maybe you learn something new about yourself and about your interests. So the core curriculum shows students the broad range of academic offerings that you will encounter here at UChicago, while also setting you down a path where you will start to build the academic skills and mindset to succeed here and after. So that's the point. And now I'm going to hand it over to Judith, who's going to establish some of the ground rules about the nuts and bolts of what the core, what you need to sort of understand um, so that we can then introduce the core. So Judith, take it away. Thank you, Will. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Judith Hernandez, one of the academic advisors here at the college. Welcome again. Uh, so today in, in my section, I'll be talking to you about U Chicago slang. This will help you get familiar with your advising appointments, you know, when you're doing registration and uh, looking at the resources here at the college. So what's the, we have three terms here that I want to talk about: the quarter system, what it's a unit, and what is a prerequisite. So the University of Chicago follows a quarter system. The quarter system is nine weeks plus finals week. We have three quarters, the autumn, winter, and spring. Summer is optional. And then we have a unit. So a unit is a credit received for taking a course. Typically, students receive 100 units of course credit for most undergraduate courses. At the end, you want to have a total of 4,200 units. So at the end of your four years, that will be equivalent to 42 units. We then have a prerequisite or prereq, short for prerequisite. Prerequisites are courses that you must take or have credit for before enrolling in a certain course. Not all courses have prerequisites. So pretty much like in the amusement park, you know, when you get a ride on a ride, you need to be a certain height. That's the same concept with taking a class. You need to have certain knowledge before you can take the next class. Um, so again, um, just making sure that if a class that has a prerequisite, make sure that you fulfill that before enrolling. If we can go to the next slide, please. Then we have a major, minor, and electives. A major refers to your primary field of study. So outside of core, this is the area where the majority of your academic courses will be taken from. All majors follow specific program requirements outlined in the college catalog. All students must at least have one major. A minor refers to an optional area of study that has fewer requirements than a major and also follows specific academic program requirements outlined in the college catalog. And then we get into the electives. We can see electives in two different ways, general electives, and then within a major and minor, we also have electives. A general elective is like ice cream flavors. You can have any class that you want from the University of Chicago. 
as long as you have space in your study plan. A major or minor elective is when you have to take a specific class designed for your major or minor. And we can go to the next slide. With, here, with this section, I wanted to talk a little bit about how a class description looks. This will be important when it comes to pre-registration or if you have questions when it comes to changing your classes. So here I have an example of a class called Chicago Politics in Political Science. So we have the class section. We have a course that's equivalent to it, uh, public policy, uh, outlined in the bottom of the, of the screenshot here and cross-listed. This becomes helpful as well in the future when perhaps you're trying to do a double major uh, or if you have questions about what specific way should you enroll in this, uh, just keeping that in mind that it can be cross-listed or you might wanna keep it in a certain, to a certain subject. And then the last term that I wanted to talk about is the sequence. Here at the University of Chicago, we follow a sequence system uh, the majority are in three, the majority of classes are offered in three sequences. So here we have an example of math core, math 131, math 132, math 133. Some areas of study require that you take the three sequences. Other times it will be optional to take first and second class and not necessarily the third one. But again, it's the, the idea of a sequence here uh, with classes. Um, so these were a few of the common terms, and now we'll pass it over to uh, more specifics of what is the core. So then our next speaker. Thanks, Judith. Um, I'm Anastasia. I'm also an advisor here. Um, so next, I'll explain how the core is structured and how it fits within the context of your other studies. The core comprises a total of 1,500 units of credit for about one third of the classes you'll take over the next four years. These 1,500 units of credit are a starting point for many majors and form the foundation for the additional 2,700 units of credit you'll take for major requirements, minor work, or electives. As Judith mentioned, by the time you finish your four years of study at UChicago, you'll need to complete 4,200 units of credit to graduate. This is an important number to have at the back of your mind while registering for classes quarter to quarter sometimes you may need to take more or less classes depending on what other commitments you may have. Next slide. So zooming into the core. The core spans the physical sciences, social sciences, mathematics, biological sciences, and the humanities. The way the advising office tracks these requirements is within three distinct groupings based on discipline that you can see outlined here. Students are given many options as to how to complete each requirement, and as I'll explain, there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. For example, in the Civ, Hume, Arts category, students must complete at least two quarters of Civ, two quarters of Hume, and one quarter of Art, but one additional quarter of their own choosing in any of these subjects for a total of 600 units of credit. Likewise, in the Math, Bio, Physical Science section, students generally complete two quarters of each but depending on if you have AP credit or have placed into an advanced section, this might not be the case. The only requirement without variables is SOCH, which is a total of three classes that must be taken in sequence and concurrently. Usually students take SOCH in their second year, but some who are planning to major in a humanities-based subject take it in their first. Again, you'll be meeting one-on-one -on -one with an advisor to talk about what options will work for you. And as Michael will explain in the next section, there are a wide array of subjects to choose from that will match your interests. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Anastasia. So hi, everybody. My name is Mike Bernardo. I am also one of the academic advisors here in the college. Um, as Anastasia was talking about, let's dive into exactly what the core is comprised of and what each, and what each section actually is. Um, so on this first slide, we're going to be talking about humanities, arts, and then civilization studies. Um, as you can see, we use quite a bit of um, acronyms here at the college. So um, it is referred to as humanities, but everyone, mostly everyone calls it HUME. Um, so HUME is comprised of, these courses are comprised of close reading, analysis, and working on writing skills. Um, 
as part of your Hume course registration, you're also required to enroll in a zero credit, I believe it meets about once a week writing seminar, uh, where you'll get to work on some of the writing prompts and writing um, assignments that you're assigned in your lecture. Um, these Hume courses are taken in consecutive, taken in sequence, and as well as taken in consecutive quarters. Um, as Anastasia mentioned earlier, it's required for all first year students. Um, I believe Robin also mentioned earlier on that next week you're going to be um, pre registering and picking your Hume sequences. Um, then, so, um, so yeah, so everyone has to take it. Um, they're taken in consecutive quarters. Um, this is one of the core requirements where um, even though all Hume sequences have three courses that are comprised of each sequence, um, you have the option to take either the first two or all three quarters. Um, next, we're gonna talk about arts. Um, this core requirement um, is made up of courses in the visual arts, drama, media, and music. Um, these courses, and in order for a course to count towards the arts core, they, it has to be explicitly listed in the catalog to count towards the core requirements. So I mentioned that because um, this has been my first academic year here at UChicago. And throughout this year, I got quite a few questions from students asking if, you know, they found like a random music course that they thought sounded fun. And they said, oh, can I have this count towards my arts requirement? If it's not in that list um, in the catalog, then the answer is going to be a firm no. Um, so please pay attention to that list, and then um, you can still take other fun courses if you want to. But um, we also have civilization studies, or everyone calls it or refers to it as civ. Um, these courses are um, comprised of courses that are built around historical and cultural studies. Um, I would for, refer to them as essentially, um, they're all history courses, but they're very specific in topic, um, as well as um, thematic and like time period um geographical um so um there are a lot of options essentially um this is a common study abroad option um so if you're thinking about studying abroad i would highly recommend that you look at the u chicago study abroad um program listings um once you start taking a look at that you will see that i'd say like a vast majority of the study abroad programs are programs where you get to take um your civ sequence even if it's you're getting three quarters worth of civ credit, it's all gonna be in that one quarter. Um, but that is why that is a pretty popular um, option for students. Um, these civ courses have varied sequences as well as prerequisite requirements. Uh, so you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, so next we're gonna talk about social sciences or what everyone um, refers to as SOCH. Um, these courses are comprised of social science research reading, analysis, writing, um, and similar to Hume courses, um, there usually is a bit of small group discussion incorporated into these courses. Um, some examples of social sciences sequences include power identity and resistance, global society, as well as classics of social and political theory. Um, as Anastasia mentioned earlier, most students complete SOCH either in their first or second year. Um, if you want to wait until either your third or even fourth year to take SOCH, you are more than welcome to do that. But please keep in mind that um, not only do SOCH courses have to be taken in a specified sequence and in consecutive quarters, unlike Hume, SOCH, you have to do all three quarters of the sequence. So all sequences of SOCH have uh, three courses in it. You have to take all three and you have to take all three in a row. So if you wait until your third or even your fourth year, um, this might put a dent in how you um, how you tackle, um, you know, like once you want to start getting um, taking courses towards majors of interest, minors, um, most students complete most of the core during the first two years. So then their third or fourth year, um, more room for courses of interest and fun electives. Um, whereas if you wait to take SOCH until either third or fourth year, um, that is one course lot per quarter that whole year. So um, just keep that in mind. We can move on to the next one. Um, next, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite part of the core, math, biological, as well as physical sciences. Um, math, I don't feel like I have to explain it too much. I feel like everyone here probably knows what math is, but uh, the math courses that we offer here um, are comprised of logical reasoning as well as computation. Um, many majors require calculus. 
Um, so if anybody here is undecided on a major, but you are, let's say, between a couple of different majors, um, I would go to the college catalog and take a look at the program requirements for any majors um, that may be of interest to you. If any one of those majors says that you need to complete at least through calculus two, then that would be a pretty done deal. I would definitely just do calculus for your math core, just so you have that done, just in case you decide to go down that route. Um, so as I mentioned, um, options for math core include calc, um, certain statistics courses, as well as computer science courses. Um, we also have our biological sciences or bios core. Um, these courses are comprised of biological concepts as well as the natural sciences. Um, at least one of the bios courses that you will be taking will have at least some sort of lab experience. Um, similar to math, different majors require specific sequences. Some don't re require any specific sequences at all. Um, if you're someone who is interested in a STEM-based major, even if it's not biological sciences, similar to math, take a look at the program requirements because some of the STEM-based majors have specific bio sequences that you'll have to choose from. Um, we also have our physical sciences core, um, which is comprised of courses where you get to understand the physical world. Um, and again, at least one of those courses that you take will have some sort of lab experience. Um, some majors require chemistry or physics. Those are typically, again, our STEM-based majors. So take a look at the catalog to see if any major of interest has requires either chemistry or physics for your physical sciences core. If it does, then that's a pretty done deal. I would take that for your physical sciences core. Beyond that, there really are a wide array of options. Um, so definitely take a look at the catalog to see what your options are. Um, and next, and finally, I'm going to be talking about language competency. All students in the college must demonstrate at least a beginning level competency in a language other than English. So that means that you either need to complete the beginning year of a language or demonstrate that you already have proficiency. So if you decide to go down the route of taking language courses here at UChicago, um, every language that is offered here at the college um, has what's called a beginning level sequence. Uh, the beginner sequence, no matter what the language is, is always numbered 101 through 103. Um, if you happen to place anywhere in the beginner sequence, you have to complete at least through 103 in order to satisfy the language competency requirement. If you are someone who um, doesn't have a lot of proficiency in, in any languages, but you're really interested in taking Italian, but you know you know zero Italian, um, you can just jump right into Italian 101 and then just complete the sequence that way. Um, that's totally fine. Let's say you took a language in high school, let's say it was French, and you know you're not like super pro proficient, but you know some. Um, if you feel like you know some and maybe you can place out of the beginning level, like 101, take a language placement exam later this summer, um, because that might exempt you from one or two quarters. Um, so if you were to take a French placement exam and place into French 102, that would mean that you would only have to do two quarters of French, French 102 and French 103, and then that would complete language competency. If you place into 103, you would only have to do that one quarter and then language competency is done. Similarly, if you really know a language um, beyond the beginner level and you're pretty confident in that, I would also take a language placement exam because you could also place into an advanced level course of that language. Um, advanced level courses are any courses that are at the 2000 level or above. So if you take the French placement exam, you place it a French 201. Um, that would mean that you would only have to do that one standalone quarter of French, French 201, and then that would also complete language competency. Um, beyond that, there are a ton of other different options. It's going to take way too long to get into it. So when you meet with your advisor later this summer, um, ask them if you have questions about other options. So Michael's done a fantastic job of describing everything that's contained within the core curriculum. And now the question is, what exactly do you need to take? Um, and that can really, the short answer for now is it really depends. Um, it depends on what your interests are and it depends on what your goals are uh, because different tracks have different core curriculum requirements. So the point of, of, of today isn't necessarily for you to come away knowing exactly what you need to take. But the point of today is to give you a sense of what kinds of questions you need to ask your academic advisor when you meet with them later in the, uh, later in the summer. 
But to give you sort of a, a sort of a broad overview, here are a few of the different areas that maybe you need to be thinking about as you start going ahead and planning your, your core curriculum. Now, this isn't to suggest that you need to know exactly what you want to major in and exactly what you want your entire college experience to look like right now. But it's a good idea to start talking about all of the different possibilities because those are going to determine the different paths you take as a part of the core curriculum. For example, if you know that you're interested in pre-med and going to medical school, the medical school requirements have very strict um, curricular expectations that dictate what core curriculum classes you need to take. You have specific humanities requirements. You have specific physical science requirements. You have specific math requirements as a part of pre-med and specific biology requirements. All four things you need to account for as you're planning your first year and for pre-med first two, three, four years here in college. So if you're interested in going pre-med, please let your academic advisor know. Similarly, STEM fields, um, physics, astrophysics, math, biology, chemistry, all of these as well have physical science requirements. As you might imagine, physics majors need to satisfy their physical science requirement with, you guessed it, physics. Um, there are also math requirements as a part of some of these STEM fields. Um, these are going to be a little bit more strict with their requirements than say some social sciences or even humanities. Some social science majors, um, I'm thinking off the top of my head, uh, public policy, psychology have math requirements. For those majors, economics as well, the most popular major here, most economics majors and all sort of public policy um, psychology majors have to take two quarters of calculus in order to progress in these, in these majors. Humanities tends to be the most flexible of the various paths. Um, typically, there aren't any kind of core curriculum requirements aside from maybe some civ requirements. Um, uh, something else that you may keep in mind as, as you're planning humanities major, maybe some language requirements, um, but in general, these are pretty flexible. But as I was saying, um, it's important to have a sense of the kinds of academic interests that you have so that as you discuss with your academic advisor what you need to do in this first year, you can start planning for that. So as we talk about planning, um, I'm going to hand it to Judith, who's going to give you a, um, a good introduction to some of the important planning tools that we have as you start thinking about, okay, what is my first year actually going to look like? So, Judith. Thank you again. Uh, so, yeah, now we are going to move over to, you know, helpful resources as the catalog, college catalog, and my planner. The college catalog is available online. It's updated every year. So even if after this webinar, you know, you might go on your web, on your web browser and uh, look up college catalog at uchicago.edu and, you know, save it. Uh, this tool is one of the most important tools that you'll be referencing throughout your four years. Uh, you know, read it, review it. It has all policies, core information, majors, the programs of study, contact information for each program. So again, save it on your website browser, on your tabs. The college catalog also has course descriptions. So uh, it's a good resource to go to when to see when classes will be offered and if there are prerequisites for the classes that you are interested in. Uh, next slide, please. And here in this screenshot, uh, we have an example of how the core, the, the curriculum looks like. So again, as Michael mentioned earlier, you know, when you're thinking about your classes, this is the area where you focus for the core. And if it's listed here, then that would be pretty straightforward, letting you know that, you know, this class qualifies to fulfill the requirements for the core. Um, so that's an example of a, cur a curriculum. And then here we have an example of a major. So what's really cool about the college catalog is that there's a section where within the majors that uh, clearly lists the program requirements in nice charts. So here you have the example of chemistry. Uh, we have here the general education requirements. So, you know, make sure you pick one of those. And once you're done focusing on the general education, you go into the major requirements also listed on the catalog. And then we have my planner. 
Uh, you still don't have access to this, but you will in the next upcoming weeks. You'll be able to access my planner on your UChicago portal. But again, here we have screenshots of how that looks like. So on your right side, uh, you have a screenshot of the My Degree Planner. And here it lets you know in green what you're fulfilling and in red what you still need. Um, and then, so, so basically my planner is a technology tool. It's very, very useful for both you as a student and us as advisors. This is how we keep track of your progress. It helps us create consistency. And again, track your progress, especially towards the end of your fourth year when you're ready to graduate. This is what we re refer to as a degree audit to make sure that all your classes are complete, that you are meeting uh, the 4,200 units. Uh, so again, very useful for you to plan and you can always play around with it uh, to plan out your four years of study. And in summary, uh, yeah, that's the college catalog on my planner. Make sure you save them once you have access to them. Great. Uh, thanks, Judith. So for this last section, um, we're gonna synthesize all the information you've heard so far today and talk about how to begin to put together your fall schedule. Um, so here you'll see a map of circles, each of which represents the three or four courses that you'll enroll in the fall quarter. Uh, note the asterisk in the last circle before going to the next slide. This is because one of the first choices you'll need to make regarding your fall schedule is if you want to take three or four classes. For example, do you plan on joining a few student clubs called RSOs or Russia Sorority or FRAT? Do you see yourself as needing more time to adjust to your first year of college? These are great reasons to take 300 units of classes. Otherwise, maybe you are planning to take on a joint degree or double major and ready to jump right in, in which case 400 units can be a good idea. Also, students must complete a minimum of three classes to be in good academic standing. So if you'd like room to drop a class, this is another reason to take four classes for your first quarter. Great, next slide, please. Um, one of the other considerations is if you'll need to take classes in a certain sequence. As we've reviewed today, most core classes are part of a sequence, each of which has different requirements. So whatever you take your first quarter will affect part of what you've been rolling for both winter and even spring quarter. So as Michael pointed out, while you're considering your options, read the catalog carefully to understand what courses might be paired together or be part of a larger sequence. Next slide. So I know this can be a lot of uh, different options to choose from. So when I work with first year students, this is sort of where I start, which is the typical first year schedule. Um, most students, um, you know, begin with human and math. Um, so all students are required to take Hume, at least two sequences, and then most students take Calc one or two. Um, if you follow the schedule, this means that at least half of your classes uh, for the first quarter are already set, and that you'll need to figure out what you want to prioritize in your other one or two classes. So next slide, which gives you a lot of flexibility for what you choose for your first quarter. So you might ask yourself if you need to start a language or if the major you're thinking about declaring has specific requirements that are expected to be complete by year one or two. You might also wanna try out a new subject or a major topic to see if a major is right for you, in which case an intro to economics class or a history class might be a good elective to consider as you work to complete core requirements. As Will mentioned earlier, it is expected that students will finish most, if not all core requirements by year two, so as you register from quarter to quarter, please keep this in mind. Again, advisors know this can be a lot to consider. So in advance of your first meeting, Will is going to talk about some questions you might ask your advisor. Thank you, Anastasia. So we've thrown a lot of information at you today. Um, everything from different humanity sequences to math classes to language competencies. As I'm going through the chat, I can see tons and tons of questions. And I think this is exactly the kind of start that we were hoping to have. Because as I, as I said earlier, um, the point of this seminar isn't for you to come away being an expert in the core curriculum. Um, I have worked here for oh, just over two years now, and I don't think I am even an expert in the core curriculum, even though I talk with students about it every day. 
Um, the point of this seminar is to introduce you to the broad strokes of the core curriculum so that you're familiar enough with it to ask questions um, to your advisor. So, um, you know, a lot of questions that I've noticed in the chat relate to, should I take two humanities or three humanities? Um, that's really going to be up to you. Um, a lot of these, these questions um, are going to be based on your preferences, right? Um, should I take calculus? Well, that depends on what preference you have for which major you're interested or what fields that you're interested. Um, will I major in STEM or humanities? Again, there is no right or wrong answer to that question other than what are you interested in doing? What are you excited about? What do you want to accomplish here? What are your goals? And all of these sort of big picture questions are precisely the kinds of questions that you should bring to your academic advisor, the kinds of things that we're here to talk about, the kinds of things that we're excited to learn about you, and the kinds of answers that are going to help determine which core curriculum classes you'll take. So um, as you go into these meetings with your advisors, um, these are meant to be the beginnings of a um, professional and productive relationship with the confidant on campus, who you can talk to about everything that you're interested in doing here. And so just be open with us about, okay, you're interested in music, or you're interested in, you know, film, or you're interested in languages, or you're interested in medical school. All of these things are precisely the kinds of things that we want to know. These are really meant to be conversation us getting to know one another so that we can have the most productive relationship so that you can then accomplish everything that you want to accomplish here. So um, that's really how I plan to approach our meetings. I think a lot of our other advisors plan to approach our meeting. And as we can begin those conversations about what are you interested in? What do you want to do here? Then we can start narrowing it down to should you take calculus? Um, which lang how, how are you going to satisfy your language requirements? Um, you know, which physical sciences do, maybe do you need for your major? Um, I think that's how we plan to approach things. And those are the kinds of things that I would encourage you to consider um, as you start your meetings with your academic advisors. So um, with that, we've got some time here um, that we can open it up for um, we can open it up for, for conversation, for chats, um, for questions. Um, we have been trying to answer a lot of the a lot of the questions in the chat so far. So if, if you've had your questions answered, good. Um, but yeah, please send along questions in the QA section or in the chat function, and we will be glad to um, to answer answer whatever questions that you may have. So um, maybe let's start with some of them that have already come in. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Robin. Sorry. I'll call them out to you, Will. And okay, please. We'll keep, keep it flowing. So um, someone's asked, you know, when should I finish the core? When is a good time for me to kind of tackle and, and start and finish the core? Mm -hmm. Sure. So the big rule of thumb is um, try to finish it within your first two years. Um, and as, as I was saying earlier before, that's because a lot of these core curriculum classes are meant to be kinds of foundational classes, classes that are going to give you context and skills that you're going to use in your major classes. So for example, if you're maybe interested in majoring in public policy, you're gonna to wanna to tackle your social sequence relatively early because those are gonna give you some of the important social science ideas, theories, modes of thinking that you're going to then use in a, in a, in a public policy setting or in a political science setting. Um, you know, similarly, if you're maybe interested in, in, in doing you know, an English, a literature major or an English major or something like that, having a civ sequence in your back pocket means that you'll have some of that um, historical context for some of the novels and some of the literature that you're going to read and think about. Um, it's a little bit more specific and a little bit more imperative that you satisfy some of your STEM requirements early if you're a physics major or a chemistry major or a biology major 
because not only are you going to build on that knowledge that you're going to learn in physics one, two, or three in later classes, but also you're going to have to use some of those lab techniques as well. So a lot of those classes are going to be prerequisites for things going forward. Um, so for, for, for many of those reasons, um, the, again, the rule of thumb is that you get it done in your first two years. Um, probably the big exception uh, is going to be CIV because a lot of students like to satisfy their CIV requirement when they go abroad. Um, that's probably one of the most popular um, abroad options, doing CIV abroad. And because of the way that a lot of sequences work out, you know, you've got your humanity sequence over the course of your first year, you've got your social sequence over the course of your second year, you can't really put those sequences on pause and then go study abroad for a quarter. And so that's why study abroad tends to happen in the third year. And if students are gonna do their, their civ requirements abroad, that's kind of why it happens over the course of the third year. So um, yeah, that, that's how I would probably answer that. Any, anyone else have anything else they'd like to contribute about you know, when this stuff gets done? I think you got it. Right. This is a question from a student who's saying they are an international student mm -hmm. who's already fluent in another language. Mm -hmm. They want to know, do they need to take a language test on Canvas or how would they um, fulfill their language requirement? I think Anastasia. Sure. So that. if your goal is simply to satisfy the language requirement, then it, talk to your academic advisor. Because if, if you're an international student who, who um, you know, went to a school where the language of instruction was something other than English, you have the opportunity to petition um, to satisfy your language requirement that way. Um, if you are interested in continuing language studies, take the placement test, um, because that's going to give you a, a place to land, that's gonna give you a course to start with, um, and, and that'll give you a, a place to, um, e even if you, yeah, uh, so that, that's what I would say. And that's probably a good rule of thumb for um, everyone. Um, if you are, just take the language placement test, uh, because it's going to be helpful as you, um, as you figure out, you know, what you need to do to, one, satisfy your language requirement, but two, if you're interested in pursuing language studies further, whether it be for a major or a minor, or just developing those skills so that you can, you know, develop that additional competency, you're, you're going to need to know where you're going to land. And so taking the language placement test is, is, is going to be super helpful. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Someone is asking, you know, if I've placed into a particular course, can I take, can I start in a lower level than my placement? Uh, specific to, to, to language or anything or something else? Let's say they placed into math 152. Mm. Can they just take 151 if they want to? No, cannot. La placement into 152 does not automatically give you placement into 151, just as placement into 153 doesn't give you placement into 152 or 151. Um, if it has maybe been a while since you've had math um, and you feel like your placement might be a fluke, talk to your academic advisor about that. Um, and then maybe we can then discuss options, but I would just say, trust the placement that you get um, and, and start with that as your, as your um, starting point. And then we can, we can maybe discuss options about that going forward. So. Someone's asking, if you take three classes in the autumn and winter, Mm -hmm. um, are you locked into taking three in the spring or can you take, you know, four in the spring and three in another quarter? How does that work? Yeah, uh, the, the short answer is no, uh, but here we go with the long answer. Um, in order to graduate from the University of Chicago, you have to earn 4,200 units. That's the, that's the number that you have to hit. You can't do, you can do more than 4,200 if you want to, but you can't do fewer. And you are allotted 12 quarters to graduate. Um, so if you break it down, that gives you six quarters of three classes and six quarters of four classes. That will land you right at 4,200 units. How you, how you decide to use those six quarters of three credits and six quarters of four credits, that's gonna be up to you. Um, now, if you're a molecular engineering major, if you're interested in pre-med, 
you may have to take more four class quarters than, than you than you expect, especially in these first few years as you're sort of establishing some of those um, sort of foundational skills and, and getting some of those prerequisites out of the way. So sometimes your path will dictate when you do what, um, but if you've got a more flexible major, like something in the humanities, maybe something in social sciences, even some of the, um, you know, some of the other STEM majors tend to not have you taking two and three sequences at once. Um, how you decide to use your three class quarters and four class quarters is really going to be up to you. So um, that's the long answer. And here's a question that I will field about pre-registration. I'm seeing questions with some confusion about pre-reg. So this is just a reminder that for your first quarter only, you're going to do your pre-registration in two parts. The first part will take place next week. That'll be June 21st, to the 24th, where you're just selecting your humanities sequence preferences. Once you've done that, you will meet with your academic advisor between um, I think it's about June 28th and about August 12th to talk about the rest of your schedule. Once you've had that conversation, you'll be able to pre-register for the rest of your remaining courses. So someone asked, you know, how do I talk to my advisor if I have not had, or how do I pick my schedule if I haven't met with my advisor yet? So just remember, there are specific instructions for next week. We have videos for you to watch. There's information in the course catalog about those Hume sequences. So we ask that you review that information and you're just picking a Hume sequence next week. Then again, you will meet with your advisor, you'll have a more in-depth conversation and you'll be able to register for the rest of your autumn quarter courses later in the summer. So we will definitely make sure that you are prepared to make those choices. Um, let me find another question. Um, are you able to change majors? Does any, any of the other advisors want to give Will a break and talk about, you know, changing majors over your time, during your time here? Yeah, I can jump in. I'm so sorry. So what was this specific question about changing majors or is it just addressing how easy? Can you do it? Do you have you to stick with one? No, you do not have to stick with one major. Um, and this is something I feel like is a common concern. Um, oftentimes I'll speak with a student who's in their second quarter of the first year and they're saying, I am gonna be doing statistics and computer science and I'm never gonna change it. And then the next quarter I meet with them and all of a sudden they're gonna be doing philosophy. Um, that is something that ha happens a lot more often than I think um, people realize. Um, I think it really depends on when that, when the changing of your mind occurs. So if you change your mind during your fourth year, okay, maybe that would be a little more challenging. But um, if you're switching majors first or second year, maybe even early third year, um, it's really not a huge deal. It's a relatively simple process to change your major. Um, most majors are anywhere from 10 to 18 or 19 courses. So if you are I think biochem is the biggest one. It has like 18 classes. So if you decide midway through your third year, you want to do biochem, but you haven't done any chemistry. Okay, maybe that's an issue. But if you decide, you know, middle of your second year that you want to pursue psychology, which is only 12 courses, that's something that you can easily change into um, and, and start chipping away at. Um, so I know that's a little bit of a broad answer, but it really just depends on the major, how many classes you have to complete for the major, and then when you decide to change your mind. But yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, someone asked, um, what does it mean to petition for your- Oh God, no, time? not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone brought it up, Mike brought it up. So. Oh, the, Mike brought it up. You can, I brought it you up. can I deal with it then. I didn't think I brought it up, oops. I'll take this one um, just to kind of give a holistic response. I think one of the important things to keep in mind at UChicago is that every student is different. And that might sound a little sentimental, but, you know, I have so many students in econ and they're all, you know, very interested in very different things. They're all studying different things. And so in a roundabout way, I think this help kind of helps to explain what a petition is. 
you're going to get more of an overview of this in the coming weeks. But essentially, at UChicago, um, a petition allows you to sort of make a case or explain your prior experience and, you know, ask to take classes in a certain quarter. So in the case of language competency, a petition allows you to say, you know, I have, I'm a, I'm a heritage speaker or I'm fluent in another language. And so you would take a petition, fill out the form and then submit that to demonstrate that you have fulfilled that requirement. But they're a huge part of UChicago culture um, and your advisor will know a lot about it. So you'll probably have lots of questions about that to bring to your first meeting. Here's a question, a great question. Can I count the same class in the core and in my major? No, go for it, Judith. Yes, no, you cannot double count. So that. I think Judith may have. No, you cannot double count. Um, yes, you cannot, you? you have to keep classes separate. Oh, is Judith back? Oh, she looks still gone. Okay, core curriculum classes are for the core curriculum. Major classes are for majors. Minor classes are for minors. You cannot double count between across those. You can double count between majors. So if you're a double major in political science and public policy, for example, you can find some overlap there. Um, but core curriculum majors and minors cannot overlap. Someone asked, is it possible to take a quarter of only core classes or not take any major classes in a quarter, but just take core classes? Yes, that is absolutely possible. I worked with quite a few first year students this year who decided to do that. Um, I'm thinking of one in particular who, he was between a couple of different majors, but he wasn't hundred percent sure. But he said, because of that, I'm just gonna, he was very sad, like he wanted to get his core done by the end of second year. Um, he knew that he wasn't going to start taking courses of interest towards his major until his second year. Um, that is something that is totally fine. Um, and we actually recommend that you try to get at least most, if not all of your core done by the end of your second year anyway. Someone asked what we actually have a lot of questions about if you receive a five on your AP language um, exam, does that fulfill language competency? I can, um, I think I answered a couple of individual questions about that in the Q&A. Um, I can link, there's a page on the catalog where it goes through examination credit, um, what UChicago accepts for each individual um, exam, and then what credit would be conferred. Um, so I'll drop that in the chat. Um, and then if you have specific questions about that, um, ask your advisor when you meet with them one-on-one -on -one later this summer. Here is a question about, um, you know, how do you how do you suggest going about choosing a major in general? What should the student be thinking about? Um, yeah, that that takes us a little bit beyond the core curriculum, but I, I mean, for me, the first place to start is really like what you find interesting and really what like what you sit and think, oh, I think I'm really fascinated by that. Because you're going to really be immersing yourself in the minutia of whatever this discipline is. You're going to be thinking about it all the time and you're going to have to be doing assignments in this thing that are gonna keep you up until you know, 12, one, two in the morning. And if you are doing something because you think, oh, okay, well, I don't much like this, but it's going to, you know, it's going to land me in like a great paying job down the road. You're not going to have that same inherent kind of motivation to sort of power through and actually do the work. Moreover, if you're able to find something that you're just really excited about and really passionate about, I think you're just going to have that inherent motivation to pursue extracurricular opportunities, to look into fellowship opportunities, to pursue internships to pursue different kinds of research opportunities. And, and so for me, and when I have conversations with my advisees, I really just wanna to get to know what do you like to do? What do you think is fun? What do you, you know, explore in your free time? And then we can go from there and just sort of, you know, see where that takes us. Um, 
And so, yeah, I think if you're able to pursue that, then everything else in my experience falls into place. And so I think that's where I would begin the conversation. I'm sure the other advisors probably have, have different ways of approaching it too. Thanks. Here's a question of just about placement exams that I will feel someone ask where, how they know what they place into. This is just a reminder that everyone should be taking their placement exams between now and June 20, uh, excuse me, July 22nd. That's the deadline to take your placement exams. And then those results will be um, posted on my.uchicago, so the student portal by August 12th. So that's a great question. Uh, Robin, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Um, I just want to find maybe one more question, and because we are almost out of time, someone asked, "Is it is it a requirement to take humanities during your first year?" Yes, that's my answer. <laughs> Looks like you're muted again, Robin. Sorry. Sorry, I think we were having some technical difficulties, but I see that Samuel is back. Samuel, do you want to um, share some closing thoughts? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So sorry, well, it seems like our campus Wi-Fi went down really quickly, but we're back at it. And uh, no worries, this is still being recorded, was being recorded, and every single Q&A question was also logged. So we will be sending any that weren't able to be answered over to our college academic advising office team, and we will be able to add those kind of as an addendum to the webinar. So you'll be able to find it at the same link that's been sent before. I'll go ahead and pop it in the chat one more time. Um, and so within one week, you will be able to find the recording of the webinar, likely even a little bit earlier than that. Um, but essentially underneath the actual video of the webinar, we will have all of our answers to your questions that were not yet able to be answered. So thank you all so much for being patient with us. Um, and also just thank you to our college academic advising office team. That was fantastic. Even I learned a little bit. Um, except I, of course, knew every single answer. So thank you all each so, so much. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I will send that link super fast right here. It can be found. So Uh-oh. I think he froze again. Hopefully everyone's yeah. able to see that link and get that link. And as Samuel said, um, we have all of the questions in the Q&A and we will be able to answer those and send them out. Thank you.